For more resources, visit rym.org. One, two, one, two, three. The Local Youth Worker is a daily podcast that's centered on five questions each week. Ranging from the practical to the professional, we're looking for answers to the questions you're asking. Whether you're in full-time, part-time, or even volunteer youth ministry, this podcast is for you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Local Youth Worker, a daily podcast brought to you by Reformed Youth Ministries. I'm your host, John Parrott. All this week, we will be talking with Nicholas Black. Nicholas, welcome. Welcome. Good to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you as well. Uh, Nicholas serves as Program Resources Director at Harvest USA. And uh, Nicholas, I feel like that, that's a good place to start is to, um, you know, begin by, by telling us a little bit about Harvest USA, the, the ministry. And then I know we, we just, we're just meeting each other. Um, we, we don't have any prior knowledge of each other. And so we've caught up a little bit, but I know you said you did some prior ministry uh, to Harvest USA. So maybe talk to us a little bit about your prior ministry um, and then uh, how you got on to Harvest USA and then what Harvest USA is. Okay. Well, Prior to coming to Harvest USA, um, I worked as the pastor for children and family ministries and then the shepherding pastor at New Life Presbyterian Church in Glenside, which is a PCA church. I was there 14, 15 years, and um, interestingly enough, uh, the president of Harvest USA at that point, the founder, is uh, a man named John Freeman, and, and John has been, <laughs> John's been pursuing me to come I was to say since about 2001. Wow. <laughs> and I always kept saying, no, no, no. Um, I'm not ready to, to leave what I'm doing. And um, so then somewhere around 2007, um, there was a number of changes going on in my church. And I just felt like now was the time that I could go. So I came to Harvest USA as the executive director. And that freed John Freeman to go out. Uh, across the country to to talk about the vision of Harvest USA and what we do. Uh, I'm I'm primarily administratively organizationally bent, <laughs> and John is not. So he <laughs> needed someone who is going to run the daily operations of the ministry. So that's what I did. Right. But then after about four five years, I gave that up in favor of a new president, Tim Geiger. Um, who is now carrying the whole vision of the ministry going forward. And that has actually freed me to do what, what I do have a gift package for, which is writing and editing and helping to produce the, the educational content for Harvest USA. Mm -hmm. So that's been my journey here. On the other hand, um, has been around 35 years. This is our 35th anniversary. Wow. We've got a very interesting beginning we started out as a ministry, and John was there at the beginning, John Freeman, uh, as a ministry of 10th Presbyterian Church in Philadelphia, a very historic old Presbyterian congregation. At that point, James Boyce uh, was the, the lead pastor. And all around the church at that point, uh, 10th was located in the gayborhood. It was a very uh, gay and lesbian neighborhood. And James Boyce knew, as did so many other people down there, that at that point, 35 years ago, um, gays and lesbians were just, to say that they were not being pursued by the church would be an understatement. They were not only not being pursued with the gospel, they were being excluded. They were being demonized because of who they were and their life. And John and others started the ministry of Harvest USA, and they went out into the neighborhood, starting Bible studies, meeting men and women, talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that became the very genesis of the ministry. It was very focused on people with, uh, in the gay life. Um, we have this wonderful little anecdote that's, that talks about our ministry, whereas the church was I think overwhelmingly harsh with gays and lesbians, with the LGBTQ community, although that, those, that acronym wasn't there 35 years ago. Um, our approach was the gospel is about God's relentless pursuit 
of rescuing people and bringing them to himself. And, and nobody is out of bounds <laughs> with the gospel. So one day John came to work in the morning and we had a, um, the office was in a brownstone, a row house in Philadelphia. And, and he noticed right there on the steps, the concrete steps of the brownstone, that someone the night before had stenciled in paint or painted in the word mercy mm. on the doorstep. We just, to this day, we don't know who did it, mm. um, but we suspect it was someone who was being ministered to by Harvest USA who felt the mercy of God. Mm. And they put that word mercy on our doorstep um, as an affirmation of what we were teaching in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Wow. So that, that, that forms a, a good narrative for our ministry. Mm. Then uh, the ministry expanded uh, primarily due to one particular cultural phenomenon right around 1993, 94, 95. I guess you can, you can kind of guess what that was. It's mm. called the internet. <laughs> the internet came on the scene and suddenly more and more people were seeking help because of sexual struggles and sexual sin mm. and, uh, and specifically pornography addiction and what it was beginning to do to individual lives, to marriages, to families. So since then, Harvest, um, which was at its beginning exclusively ministering to same-sex individuals, um, we now minister to people struggling with pornography, all sorts of sexual struggles in their life, Gender has now become a focus in the last few years. Um, we have an active and growing ministry to parents whose children are coming out younger and younger. Hmm. 35 years ago, those who came out from a church background were primarily um, coming out in college or afterward. Now, kids are coming out at the age of 12. 13, 14. It's a totally different mm -hmm. uh, phenomenon. So we are ministering to, to parents. How do you love your kids? How do you stay involved with your kids? Don't throw them out of the house. You know, that's the narrative that the media talks about, that, that gay kids are being thrown out of the house by Christians. Um, that may be happening, John. We don't see it around here, and we don't teach that at all. So how do you love your kids? How do you, how do you still continue to disciple them while you wait for God to work on their heart? So our ministry has expanded and um, yeah, that's us. Hmm. I mean, that is an amazing story. I was not, I mean, I've been aware of Harvest USA, but not really the, the origins, uh, but I really appreciate uh, the work you all are doing. And, and, and how many, how many do you have on staff now off the top of your head? Do you know, not to put you on the spot there, but. It's still, still small. We have about 23 people in the, in the Philadelphia office. We have about four more in Pittsburgh. Um, but that's, we're not going to grow anymore in terms of administrative offices with the growth of the internet uh, and the capability of uh, technology. We don't need to have offices across the country anymore. Mm -hmm. we, we just need to be in one place and we can do a lot more training from just one location, much like what you're doing mm -hmm. with, with what you're doing as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that is, again, we, we appreciate your, your work so much and appreciate what you all are doing. And, and, and part of obviously wanting to, to plug Harvest and uh, all this week, we're going to be talking about issues related uh, to, kind of, kind of, I mean, sexual brokenness, I guess we can say just uh, more broadly. Uh, on this second season of the podcast, we're dealing with frequently asked questions that youth workers receive. And we know mm -hmm. questions around sexuality um, are some of the, the, the main questions youth workers are dealing with. And so Harvest USA has just released this um, study called A Live Gospel Sexuality for Students. And so we're going to have just a, a few uh, conversations about this study, but then go off of, of this study a little bit and have some broader uh, discussions on um, sexuality. Uh, and so just uh, this is an introduction uh, to uh, the, the book, this brief introduction says, you know, this is a 10 week small group study that covers many of the major issues concerning human sexuality. All of us are clamoring for a steadfastness and a hope in the world in which we live. But despite the sexual chaos of the world around us, 
and the chaos we experience in our own sexuality, Jesus is Lord and Savior. And that's just the, the beginning as you open up uh, this guide. Do, do you mind just telling us a little bit about this new resource? And then again, tomorrow we'll, we'll discuss uh, some specific elements of it, but just kind of a brief overview of what, what is Alive, Gospel Sexuality for Students. Yeah, one of the things that we're struck with, John, is the reality that two things are happening in the church when it comes about talking about sex and sexuality. One, churches aren't talking about it at all. Big yes. danger there. Um, you know, it's a common, the common phrase today is that the internet is the major and primary sex educator of our youth. It yes. is. Yeah. Absolutely is. So, one, churches are silent. Two, when churches are not silent, and we have found that when they are stalk, talking about these matters, they're talking about it in a lecture format, or they're talking about it with occasional sermons. But there's nothing in depth that connects with where the students are and what they're thinking about and what they're actually doing in their life. So Alive is a, is a um, Bible study that connects where youth already are in terms of what they think and in terms of what they're doing. We ground it in scripture, but the whole goal is not to just simply disseminate information to them. We want them to talk. Hmm. We need a discussion about sex and sexuality. One of the things that's happening is that kids earlier and earlier, because of the, the pervasive influence of the internet and the peer groups in which kids are involved with, they are forming ideas about sex and sexuality at a younger and younger age. Absolutely. In fact, yeah, and the culture is actually pushing them in that direction. And you know, you know enough about youth that you don't want to stand out like a sore thumb. So you want to, you know, if you're a Christian youth, you're, there's this enormous pressure to cave in to cultural perspectives on sex and sexuality. Um, we want to be able to open up a dialogue and a discussion in a safe place. That's a youth group or a small group within the church where kids can begin to talk about these matters and not feel like they're being talked down to, not being lectured. And, and also, we don't want to have a curriculum, and this is how a lie was, was constructed. We're not just simply saying, just wait until you're married. That's common. You know, a common Christian message to Christian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just wait until you're married and then everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Sort of a morality-based abstinent approach. Mm. We know that kids won't relate to that message. And it's also, it's very much law keeping and rule keeping. Mm. So one of the things that, that Alive keeps working throughout its discussion curriculum is union with Christ. That, that what motivates us or what should motivate us is not we have to do this because if we don't, God's going to get us. Hmm. But rather, look what Jesus Christ has done for us. Look, about, look at, at his love and his mercy and his kindness, his presence in our life. Let that transform you. And on that basis, live your life in a way that, that honors him, that, that glorifies him. That is a much more far-lasting motivational dynamic than rule-keeping is. Hmm. Rule-keeping just has a sort of a, a short, short lifespan to it. And then it falls. But, but union with Christ, a, an alive relationship with Jesus, has legs to it, just real long legs to it. So that's what, again, alive is a... Um, is a, is a Context for opening up these discussions in a safe place uh, within the church. Hmm. Yeah, and, and I like I, obviously not just how you uh, talk about union with Christ, and that is a, a vital starting point um, for for this discussion and to help students grasp that and to to see and better understand their their union uh, with Christ. But I love how you say it is a conversation starter. That it's not just sitting down lecturing uh, th these students. And so yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's. A helpful resource uh, that I look forward to talking about a little bit more uh, tomorrow. Uh, we'll talk about some of the specific uh, outline and, and uh, topics that you cover in this uh, 10 lesson study. Uh, but again, Nicholas, thank you for uh, your time today. Thank you for the work that you're doing at Harvest USA and look forward to talking to you more tomorrow. All right. Thanks. Good to talk with you, John. <laughs>